Have you ever had to discuss stormwater issues with your neighbor and wondered how you can be a good stormwater neighbor? This video will help answer that question. This is just one of many questions that you can find answers to as part of the Penn State Extension Stormwater Basics Education Series. Neighbor disputes over stormwater are very common. Rainwater doesn't follow your property boundaries and there are often instances where water flows from one property onto another and causes damage. It's important to realize that activities on your property can have an adverse effect on your neighbor's property. The first thing to do as a good stormwater neighbor is to familiarize yourself with how rainwater and snow melt flow on your property. During a storm, look for places where water enters and exits your property. Are there areas of concentrated flow currently causing damage to your property or to an adjacent neighboring property? If so, those flows should be redirected into a vegetated area to slow the water and encourage infiltration. You could also install a rain barrel, cistern, rain garden, or dry well to collect your roof runoff before it has a chance to flow downhill. When installing best management practices, also known as BMPs, don't direct your stormwater flows onto a neighboring property and don't block stormwater from leaving your neighbor's property. Proper maintenance of your lawn, driveway, and gardens can help prevent erosion and sedimentation on your own and on other people's properties. This includes eliminating exposed and disturbed areas where the bare soil can easily be carried away by stormwater. Stabilize these areas by adding new vegetation, mulch, or other cover as soon as possible after you complete a project or in places where frequent activity has exposed the soil over time. Changes from building and land development activities can also alter natural flows of stormwater. It's important to recognize that grading and regrading can change how rainwater and snowmelt move across the land. It's essential to leave natural drainage paths undisturbed whenever possible and never intentionally concentrate stormwater flows. When stormwater is spread widely across the land surface, it's much more likely to soak slowly into the ground and not cause property damage. If you live near a stream, pond, or stormwater drain, you can plant a riparian buffer or establish a grow zone along the water body. This strip of trees, shrubs, or meadow plants will filter pollutants out of the stormwater. It will also slow down the speed and intensity of the flow. This will help prevent erosion on your property. Yard waste such as leaves, grass clippings, and mulch should not be piled near a stream or a stormwater drain. Along with litter and other debris, these things can clog a drain or small stream and potentially cause flooding and pollution during a storm or winter melt. If you find yourself in a dispute with a neighboring property owner over stormwater issues, remember, open communication and cooperation can go a long way to prevent stormwater issues and help resolve existing stormwater problems. If you have questions about local stormwater regulations, you should contact your municipality. In summary, it's important to take steps to protect natural waterways, infiltration areas, and drainage paths, and to be mindful of how your actions can affect adjacent landowners. Being a good stormwater neighbor means taking steps to prevent damage not only to your own property, but also to your neighbor's property. If you have additional questions about stormwater, or you are interested in learning more, you can find a full series of videos and articles on the Penn State Extension website. Just search for Stormwater Basics.